get saved at the end of their life. And yeah. I don't have any other choice but to believe that it's possible whenever I read the story of the thief on the cross next to Jesus. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. Amen. Oh, Hallelujah. I told him, I said, well, if you do not, if you don't believe in deathbed confessions, mm -hmm. if you do not believe that it's the blood of Jesus plus nothing else, yeah. if you think that there's more that has to be done, then when you get to heaven, maybe you need to make a motion for the thief to be removed from heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh. Because he's there. Yes. You either have to believe in deathbed confessions or you're calling Jesus a liar because He said this day, mm -hmm. today will. you will be with me yeah. in paradise. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. And one of them said, well, that was before the new covenant. That was before Jesus died. Go read your Bible. Jesus died before the thieves did. All right. The thieves were still alive. Mm -hmm. So Jesus died. The thief died under the new, what we call the new covenant. <clears throat> of the blood of Jesus. All right. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. Because when they went to break the legs of those that hung on the cross, yeah. the Bible says that they broke the legs of the other two, but when they came to Jesus, He had already died. Mm -hmm. So they didn't break His legs. Yeah. So Jesus died before the thief did. And All He said, right. Today you will be with Me. Amen. And this man was not a religious man. Matter of fact, He told the other one that was hanging in the rhythm, He said, We're here because we deserve it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're guilty. This is, you know, we're here, but this man has done nothing. Mm -hmm. And when he put his faith in Jesus Christ and said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom, yeah. he was born again, mm -hmm. saved. Because that's what it takes to Praise be saved, God. is faith yeah. in Jesus Christ and his shed Amen. blood, his finished work on the cross of Calvary. Nothing else yeah. can save you today. Yeah. And that's basically what we've been talking about. For I looked went last night and I looked back. This is the seventh sermon that we've had dealing with this. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, the first and second verse. Hebrews 11 and 1 and 2. You can probably quote it by heart now. I hope so. I hope you can. Right. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it... The elders obtained a good report. By what? By faith. They obtained a good report by faith. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time this morning reviewing where we've already been. But in looking at this, we have seen how that the Old Testament saints were justified the same way that Brother David Fentress is justified today. When you read about Abraham in Paul's writings, Paul is clear on how Abraham was justified he believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Amen. Abraham was justified by faith. Yes, we sir. talked about Abraham, then we talked about Adam and Eve. Amen. All the way back in the beginning of our time, mm -hmm. the beginning of time as we know it, all the way back there we see a picture of the Lamb of God to come, the sacrifice that would be made, and where man's faith must be placed and how that man's ways are not good enough. Amen. We went from there to looking at Adam and Eve's sons, Cain and Abel, and the offerings that they brought. Yes. And how that Cain offered that which was not acceptable to God. Abel's offering was accepted. Cain's was rejected because Cain offered something that he had prepared himself. Something, the work of his hands. Mm -hmm. Man is still trying to do that today. Mm -hmm. Trying to get approval from God through the, the works of our flesh. The things that we can accomplish. Surely God will approve me now that I have done these great and mighty works. I like what mom was talking about pleading the blood. And my mind went to a courtroom. And how that a judge will call you up before them. And they'll say, how do you plead? Mm -hmm. Do you plead innocent? Or do you plead guilty? I plead the blood. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I certainly cannot plead innocent because I'm not innocent. Amen. Amen. But thank God my guilty sentence, the, the, uh, the penalty for that guilt was taken upon the shoulders of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. So I plead the blood today. That is where my justification lies this morning. So we talked about Cain and Abel. We talked about the... The spirit of death, the, the Lord of death there, the, the Lord coming through, and that's not good terminology. I have been feeling a little bit under the weather this week, so forgive me for calling him the Lord of death. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
we see how God comes through the angel of death. I'll get it right in a minute. Comes through the land of Egypt to take the firstborn in the tenth plague there. And we see how that those that were spared was because of one reason. Not because he saw what good people they were. Not because he saw what good law keepers they were. Not because he saw what good works they had. But because he saw the blood. Amen. Because the blood. That's what spared them. Yeah. That's what caused God to. He said when I see the blood I will pass over you. Oh. That's what will cause judgment to be passed over mm -hmm. you today. To, the, to be deterred. To be kept from you. Amen. Yeah. That's what will keep you from seeing God's judgment and wrath is the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we looked how that Noah, as he built his ark and he preached righteousness for 120 years, that in that time, and as Jesus said over in the Gospels, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Yeah. He spoke there about how that things would be the, the same way. And we talked about evil seducers and we talked about their evil thoughts. But we also talked about that in Noah's day there was one way of escape. Only one way. You could think, well, I'm going to get on the highest hill there is out here. The highest mountain there is out here. Wouldn't have worked. You could think, well, I'm, I, I'm a good person. I don't need to do that. God's not going to destroy me. Good things will not keep you out of hell. Being a good person will not keep you out of hell. There was only one way to, to be spared of the judgment that God was pouring out upon the land. And that was the, that was the ark that Noah built. The ark that Noah built by the instruction of God Amen. Only one way of escape, and the same goes today. And then yeah. last week we talked about Dagon. Mm -hmm. And we talked about how that we set our works up the way that they set Dagon up. Yeah. Brother David, we think, I can live this thing. I can do this thing. It's, I can do it. I've got the power to do it. Mm -hmm. And we fall flat on our face, and instead of realizing we cannot do it, and where our <laughs> faith needs to be, we get up and we think, oh, I'll do it this time. Yeah. I'll do it this time. The same way they lifted old Dagon up, Fastened him back into place and thought, now, now everything's back to normal. Oh. Till finally they decided, wait a minute. We got to get God's presence out of here. Mm -hmm. Because in God's presence, Dagon falls. Mm -hmm. yeah. Without God's present presence, Dagon can stand. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen? Same with your works. You'll think your works are good enough. And same with... Brother Sleeves brought up a good point after the sermon last Sunday. Same way with, with the false religions and the things that's going on today. They must keep Jesus out because you see when Jesus is there, He demands all reverence. He demands all worship. You cannot have it the way that Brother David was talking about how they want it. To put the Quran on one side and the Bible on the other because our God demands not economicalism. Oh. Not that, you know, we all get along and that all the gods stand in a row and everybody can get, you know, can, can join arms. Our God demands all worship. Amen. Amen. All worship. I am the Lord thy God. Yeah. He says, worship no other gods besides me. Amen. He said, I am the Lord God. Besides me, there is no other. Yeah. So whenever you bring Jesus in, you can't. Come on. You can't bring not the Jesus in because when you do, he demands all worship. So they can't have him in the midst of their stuff. Get him out of here because he demands all worship. Yeah. He demands all worship. Come on, brother. And that's what they found out about the Ark of the Covenant when they brought yes. it into the temple of Dagon. Come on. And then I talked to you for a few minutes Tuesday night about the ministry of Paul. And I want to go back there this morning. I want you to go back with me to 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. The Apostle Paul was the greatest preacher of the message of the cross that this world has ever known. He was by far, I think if you talk to any scholar, they'll tell you that he was the greatest apostle of the church. Paul was very clear in his writings what his message was. He makes it very clear here in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, whenever he's writing to the church of Corinth, and he tells them why God sent him what his calling was, yeah. what the message was that he was to preach to the Jews and to the Gentiles. He was very clear in his ministry. We find the emphasis of the message that he preached all throughout his writings. And his emphasis was not on the law. Though he would mention the law. He would do some teaching on the law. 
But all of his teachings, whether he was talking about the law, whether he was talking about works, no matter what he was talking about, they, were, they all came back to his faith and his teaching in the cross. And we find that here when he's talking to these folks, he says in verse 11, For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. In other words, there were some <coughs> fightings and some, strife, and some strife going on between these folks. I'm glad we don't have that problem today. Amen? Now this I say, we've got more churches splitting, I tell you what, left and right. Every time I talk to somebody, they say, well, those people used to go there, but they, yeah. that church split. Amen? Yeah. And sometimes it's because the pastor's had his hand in the till, and sometimes it's just because people can't get along. Amen? Uh -huh. Strife. And that's what this was going on here. And, and all of it goes, all of that goes back to the enemy. Amen. He would like nothing better than to cause strife between God's people. Yes. That's what caused Abraham and Lot to have to separate. Right. Strife between their herdsmen. Yeah. Yeah. It was strife that caused them to have to part company. Amen. So we, we see that all the time now. Yeah. Church people having to part company. Right. Because of the strife that's going on in the midst of that. True. And you see this here. Paul says, I've heard there's contentions among you. Yeah. He says, now this I say that every one of you saith I am of Paul and I am of Apollos. And I have Cephas, and I have Christ. He says, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you. But Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in my own name. And I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Besides, and what he means here is besides that, I know not whether I baptized any other. What he's saying is that these are the ones I baptized, and I don't. He'd be like me. I don't think I baptized them. I can't recall anybody else that I have baptized. Because you see, the Apostle Paul's emphasis of his ministry was not on baptism either. Though he would talk about baptism, he would teach on baptism. His emphasis was not on speaking in tongues. He would teach on speaking in tongues. Amen. Because that was a part of it. But. His emphasis would always be on the cross of Calvary and Christ and Him crucified. Listen to what he tells them in the 17th verse. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Now we've read that scripture over and over before and we've preached sermons that's had that scripture in there. I want you to look at the fact that Paul said that he came to preach the gospel not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ be made of none effect. If you drop down to verse 23, he says, but we preach Christ crucified under the Jews a stumbling block and under the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Paul said, whenever I came to you, I came to you preaching, not, not to baptize, but to preach the gospel of Christ and not with, wis not with wise words, lest the cross of Christ be made of none effect. We find him saying in another place, in the second chapter, just go one chapter over. First Corinthians, the second chapter, beginning in the first verse, still talking to the same people. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of the power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Paul makes mention more than once that whenever he came teaching and preaching to them, that he did not come to them with, with, with wise words yeah. and excellence, excellency of speech. 
Now, I believe that Paul did that on purpose. Some may say, well, maybe Paul couldn't talk too good or Paul didn't know. No, I don't believe that. I believe that Paul purposely wanted the attention to be on the cross and not how great a teacher he was. I believe that Paul wanted the, that, that he specifically made sure that his teaching always pointed to Christ and not himself. He said, lest the cross be of none effect. He said that he that glory, let him glory in the Lord. <clears throat> when I came to you and preached, that's because Paul was a learned man. He was not stupid. That's right. Paul was a smart man. Come on. He had gained a high position within the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. He knew what he was doing. But he also knew that he didn't want any of them to say, I'm of Paul. He didn't want any of them to say that I am, I am a follower of Paul and Paul alone. Later he would say, follow me, even as I follow Christ. Mm -hmm. Paul wanted to make sure, see, every time he talked about himself, he pointed toward Jesus Christ as being his source. He pointed toward the cross and Jesus and Him crucified yeah. as being the source. And Paul would mention himself in several places. Amen. But he would always mention himself in a way that uplifted the Lord and humbled Himself. Today we see in the modern day church, there is so much of it's all about me. It's all about you. You can be. I even saw somebody had posted some stuff this week about self-esteem. I choose self-esteem. Well, you choose your choice is foolish this morning. Amen. Because we are not to esteem self. Self will drag you to hell. Amen. Amen. True. He that is that humbles himself, the Lord will exalt. Right. But the minute we begin to think that we are it, the minute that we begin to think that our ministry is it. Yeah. That, 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 that we are in and, 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 and we're all that there is. See, Paul didn't want people to get their eyes on him, which you know the flesh does anyway. Right. There were people, I'm sure, that if the Apostle Paul had backslid, they would have backslid too. Right. But he told them specifically, I, when I came to you preaching, I came to you preaching not with words of man's wisdom, not with the spotlight on Paul, but with the spotlight on Jesus Christ and Him crucified. We today need to take the spotlight off of man and off of self and put it where it belongs, on Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. Paul's message always focused on the cross. Right. And when he talked about himself, he didn't stand there and boast of how great he was. You know, he would say things like this. You know, that which I want to do, I wind up not doing it. Those things which I don't want to do, I wind up doing those things. He would say, in me there is no good thing. Outside of Christ, there is no good thing within me. Paul, letting them know. See, the Apostle Paul knew where he, he didn't have a pedigree that he could stand and boast of. That he had been such a good man. That he had helped the poor. That he had done all this. Or that, you know, today you hear people say, well, I'm a preacher and my daddy was a preacher and his daddy was a preacher. As Paul would talk to Timothy and talk about the faith that Timothy's mother had and the faith that Timothy's grandmother had. We don't hear of those type of things about the Apostle Paul. He could not boast of the, of the pedigree spiritually that he had. Because at one time he was a murderer of God's people. Amen? And he knew this. Did he let it stop him? No. But he would stand amongst them and say, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed, of blessed God, which was committed to my trust... He said, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me for that He counted me faithful putting me into the ministry who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Amen. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with love, with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, He said. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of who I am, the chief. Mm -hmm, Amen. Yeah. Of who I am, chief. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Then he says, how be it? For this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering. You know what he was saying? 
He's using me as an example to show that if he can save me, he can save anybody. Amen. <laughs> I was a blasphemer. I was a persecutor of the church. But when he knocked me down on the road to Damascus and I became born again, he wanted my message to be to the Gentiles and to the Jews, to the Greeks. He can save me. He can save you. Amen. Amen. You talk about sinners. Let me tell you about sinners, son. i tell you where I used to be and who I see. Paul knew. Yeah. Paul knew who he used to be True. without the cross. True. He knew who he was now with the cross. Amen? Yeah. And that allowed him to preach the message of the cross like no other man right. has before. True. No other man has since because he knew what he was without Jesus. Amen. He knew what he was without the cross. And I guarantee you, there were some people that kept him humble. Right. Not everybody forgot the things that Paul used to be. Really? But Paul used that in his ministry. Before you bring it up, let me bring it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was a blasphemer. I was a persecutor of the church. I was injurious, meaning I was an injury to the body of Christ. But I obtained mercy. Are you glad this morning that you used to be what you used to be, but today you ain't what you used to be because you've obtained mercy. Hallelujah. Amen. I've obtained mercy. Thank God. Thank so you won't talk about sinners. I'm the chief. Yeah. I'm the chief of sinners. Yeah. Oh, but one day on the road to Damascus, yeah. I got my eyes off of it. You see, the Apostle Paul knew right. that it was not in the law because at one time he was a law keeper. Right. Yeah. He knew it was not in religion because at one time he was a religious. He thought he's doing God a service. Right. Killing Stephen. Uh -huh. He thought he was doing God a service as he marched forth mm -hmm. to Damascus with those papers in his pocket to kill every Christian he get his hands on. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. He, he knew it wasn't in religion. He knew it wasn't in the law. He knew it wasn't in money because he had had money. Mm -hmm. Amen. He knew it was not in status in the, in, in as far as the yeah. government went because he had had status. Mm -hmm. Amen. In society. Yeah. He knew that none of that mattered. Mm -hmm. He knew that none of that counted. Mm -hmm. He said, I count everything dung. Mm -hmm. Dung. D-U-N-G. I don't have to give you no definition, no definition of what that means. I count everything else as dung. Amen? The only place righteousness can be found today is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And that's what the Apostle Paul preached. He said, He sent me not to baptize, but to preach to you the gospel of Jesus Christ. So much so. You talk about dogmatic. He said, if anybody else comes to you preaching any other message, preaching any other gospel, preaching any other way, let him be cursed. If I change my mind, if I become more enlightened, you know, we got a lot of those preachers today. They used to walk in truth, but now they become more enlightened. Not what they've done is they've become deceived. Amen. He said, if I come to you preaching another message, let me be cursed. If an angel from heaven comes and preaches you anything other than Jesus Christ and Him crucified, let Him be accursed. Right. Amen. Paul knew yep. what he was True. without the tree. Amen. Amen. True. And when we talk about the finished work of the cross and we talk about the tree here, mm -hmm. we're not talking about that old piece of wood. Yeah. We're talking about what Jesus Christ did that mm -hmm. day on Calvary's cross. We're talking about His finished work. Amen? Right. So the Apostle Paul knew it wasn't in the law because he kept the law. Right. He knew it wasn't in religion because he had been religious. He knew it wasn't in wealth. He knew it wasn't in position. He knew that it was in the cross of Calvary. Right. He would even say, I preach this way because I don't want the cross to be of none effect to you. I want you to realize where your help comes from. Amen. And it's not the Apostle Paul, but the message that the Apostle Paul preached. Right. The Apostle Paul preached the message of the cross. And that's what we've been preaching specifically for the last seven weeks. It's actually been more than that because of the snow and all the different things that went on. But the last seven sermons that we've been dealing with on this Faith, being justified, 
By faith. Obtaining a good report by faith. Faith in what? Faith in Jesus and His finished work. Our good works are great and you need to do good works. But the moment your faith is transferred, the moment your attention is drawn away from the object where your faith needs to be, the finished work of Christ, and you begin to put your faith and think that you're righteous because of your works, and think that you're righteous because of your church attendance, and think that you're righteous because of your tithing, mm -hmm. and think that you're righteous because of your good deeds, yeah. and think that you're righteous because you do better things or you live a better life than somebody else does. The moment you begin to do that, mm -hmm. you begin to stray away from the only source of righteousness, and that is the cross of Calvary, Amen. the finished work of Jesus. Exodus, the 15th chapter. We need to realize today that no matter the works we have, no matter the deeds, no matter how well or how bad we keep the law, we must realize there is nothing in us, there is nothing within our own ability that can save us. We must realize that our faith must rest in Jesus Christ and Him crucified. If not, you will be lost and saved a hundred times this week. Because every time you mess up, you'll think you're lost. Every time you live a good day or you do a good thing, you'll think you're saved. I have seen people who have no idea whether they're saved or whether they're lost. You talk to them one day, they're living for the Lord. The next day, they believe they're lost because they. I've talked to one man and I would talk to him. He said, well, I'm on my way to hell. Next day, I talked to him, well, I'm living for the Lord. Doesn't work that way. Amen? The reason you feel that way, the reason you believe that is because Rodney's trusting in Rodney. And Rodney will let Rodney down every time. Have you learned that, Brother Rodney? Yeah. Amen. Brother Isaac said one time, he told me something, he said, I learned that the hard way. <laughs> I learned that the hard way myself. <laughs> I have trusted in my flesh. And my flesh let me down, and I got back up, and I trusted in my flesh again, and my flesh let me down. Yeah. Sooner or later, we're going to realize. I hope it's sooner than later, because later may be too late. Amen. Hopefully, we will realize where our faith must rest today. Yeah. In Jesus Christ and His finished work. Amen. Amen. Look with me, if you will, and I'm closing today. Exodus, the 15th chapter. Say, so what in the world are we going to see in the book of Exodus? It goes along with what we've been talking about with the Apostle Paul and the message of the cross. We are seeing the message of the cross from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Mm -hmm. We are seeing that those that are saved, though, when you get to heaven, Brother David, yeah. and you're sitting down under the tree of life there and you're picking one on the guitar and oh, Abraham walks up and y'all get to talking. <laughs> Abraham's going to tell you he got there the same way you did. Oh, yeah. By faith. Amen. When we get over there and David's playing his harp and we're talking to him and, and asking him, how did it feel when you saw Goliath fall? Amen? <laughs> how did you make it through? Yeah. I made it by faith, son, just like you did. Amen. Amen? Justification always has came through faith. And that faith has always been pointed in one direction from Genesis to Revelation. Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. Right. Listen to this. Exodus 15 and 22. Talking about the children of Israel. Praise the Lord. Out in the wilderness. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Mm. And they went out in the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. So they've been three days with no water. Thirsty and in the wilderness. Mm. They're out there in the hot desert burning sand. Amen. When they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah for they were bitter. Mm. Therefore the name of it was called Marah. And the people murmured against Moses. That's pretty common. Saying, what shall we drink? What are we going to do? We're thirsty. We're thirsting to death. And more than likely, that, knowing that crew the way we do, the way that they were talking back at the Red Sea, they probably was murmuring among themselves saying stuff like, brought us out here to die, I told you. We're going to thirst to death. We're better off. At least back there in Egypt, whenever we were under the heavy hand of Pharaoh, we did have some water. Yeah. We don't have no water out here. This water's bitter. 
This water is contaminated. This water, we, can, we can't drink it. Yeah. It will not work. It will not sustain us. I couldn't help but think about that woman at the well whenever she passed by. She came there and Jesus was sitting on the well and she came to get her some water. And Jesus said, this water that you came after, it, you'll thirst again. This ain't sufficient for what you need. But if you'll drink of the water that I give you, See, this water here was not sufficient for them. They could not drink any of it. It was deadly to them. It could not give them life. And we find that Moses, in verse 25, it says, And he cried unto the Lord. Moses asking God for the answer. What is the answer? We need help, God. We need help, Lord. Show me the answer. And the Bible says, And the Lord showed him a tree. Oh, hallelujah. Which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them. They come to the waters of Marah. Their thirst has been three days since they've had anything to drink. Murmuring, complaining, worried, some of them crying. Feel like they ain't got no hope left. Moses, the only thing he knows to do is call out to the Lord. I can't, I can't fix this problem. Oh, the sooner we realize that, the better off we'll be. I can't fix this problem. Lord, I've wrestled with this my whole life. Lord, I've wrestled with this thing, and I've wrestled with this thing, and it's had me down, and I can't, don't seem like I'm going any farther, and I, it just seems like I'm dry, and I'm thirsty, and I need some help this morning. Help me, Jesus. And the Bible says the Lord showed him a tree, and when he took the tree... And whenever that tree was thrown into the water, the waters were no longer bitter, but the waters became sweet for them to drink. They were able to drink it. The Apostle Paul realized that without the cross, without the tree, without the finished work there, he was those bitter waters. Your life today is bitter waters without the cross. Amen. You will drink the bitter waters of your flesh over and over and again. Remain thirsty. Remain dry. Remain confused. Feel like that you're lost. Feel like that you don't have any hope. Feel like that there ain't no way you can be saved because you can't live it. Yeah. And then Moses saw a tree. God wants us today to see that tree. Amen. To see the finished work that yes. was done there. Yes, sir. To realize that Myrtle can't do it. Right. Tyler can't do it. Come on. He's already done it. All right. Thank God. He's already done it. Thank the Lord. You and I, our lives without the cross are those bitter waters. Yes, sir. No life. No life. Nothing could live there. Right. Deadly. No life. There's no life to be found in the flesh. Come on. Only death. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. Amen. But the end thereof is death, destruction. True. Amen. Amen. But there is a cure today. It's a blessed and timeless and ageless cure. The cross of Calvary and the message of the cross. Listen to the <clears throat> preachers out there if you're listening to me. If your message does not contain the cross, your message is bitter. Those that come can find no spiritual satisfaction from what you offer because the water that you give is not drinkable. It will not, let me put it this way, it will not nourish their spirit. It will not nourish their spirit. Only the message of the cross will feed and bring water to our thirsty souls. Amen. The Apostle Paul would preach this over and over again in his writings. He would talk to a people that had fallen from grace. And you know, we get that term <clears throat> mixed up. We think that if a preacher sins and he's caught in it, well, that preacher fell from grace. That's not what it's talking about. Go over there and read that. When the Apostle Paul talked about falling from grace, he was talking about whenever you begin to lean on other things for righteousness <clears throat> other than the message, other than the cross, the finished work of Jesus. Whenever you begin to lean, go back into the doing the rituals and to doing the law and keeping those things and trying to make yourself righteous, 
then you have fallen from grace. The cross of Christ becomes none effect to you whenever you begin to try and obtain righteousness on your own. It becomes of no effect to you. And that's what he told them. He said that I don't want the cross of Christ to be of none effect to you because I want you to realize that is where our hope comes from. Amen. That is where our joy can be found. Absolutely. That is where our spiritual victory is found today in the cross of Calvary. I've got found an old hymn. I want to... Brother David might have heard this one before, but I had never heard this. This was written by Frederick Whitfield long, long time ago. I saw the cross of Jesus when burdened with my sin. I sought the cross of Jesus to give me peace within. I brought my soul to Jesus. He cleansed it in His blood. And in the cross of Jesus, I found my peace with God. I love the cross of Jesus. It tells me what I am, a vile and guilty creature saved only through the Lamb. No righteousness nor merit, no beauty can I plead. Yet in the cross I glory, my title there I read. I trust the cross of Jesus in every trying hour, my sure and certain refuge, my never failing tower. In every fear and conflict, I more than conqueror am. Living, I'm safe, or dying through Christ, the risen Lamb. Safe in the cross of Jesus, there let my weary heart still rest in peace unshaken till with Him ne'er depart. And then in strains of glory, I'll sing His wondrous power where sin can never enter and death is known no more. When you go back and you read some of the old hymnals and the things that they wrote. Yeah. Their emphasis is always on the cross and the blood. Right. Only in the modern day writings of people that they call now church songs mm. do you find more of an <clears throat> emphasis on flesh and more of an emphasis on us. Right. These old writers knew. Mm -hmm. These old writers knew. We talked about William Cooper before. Yeah. And the song, There is a Fountain filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose all their guilty stains. These men, like the Apostle Paul, knew <coughs> that it was not within them. Yeah. Many of them came out of hardship. Some of them came out of insanity. Mm. Lost their minds and God brought them back. Yeah. They knew that it was not in them. The sooner you realize that your righteousness and your salvation is not in you, yeah. it is in Him, the better off you'll be. Amen. Amen. True. For by it, the elders obtained a good report by faith. Mm -hmm. right. By it, we yeah. will obtain a good report yeah. by faith. Someone else this morning.